Hi there, I'm Farmer Tina and I'm coming to you from the Urban Farm in Morristown today to give you a little tour of what's going on in our farm. Today is July 1st, lots of things growing in the farm, so I can't wait to take you on a tour and show you some of the special things that we do here at our Urban Farm. Before we start our tour, I just want to tell you a little bit about Grow It Green Morristown. We are a nonprofit organization that runs this urban farm. We also are in charge of a community garden on Early Street, and we also have a greenhouse that we lease on St. Elizabeth's College. But our farm, all of the produce is planted and grown by hand using regenerative farming methods, which means we make sure our soil is nice and healthy. Not only that, but we make sure we don't use any chemicals or pesticides on any of our plants. Grow Green Morristown is a nonprofit organization. So the food that we are growing, some of it is sold at our farm stand and I'll show you guys a little bit of video of our farm stand and we have CSA members, which means community supported agriculture. But we also donate a lot of the food that we grow to people in need. We donate to places like Nourish New Jersey right here in Morristown and Table of Hope. Also during the school year, I do a lot of programming with the Morris School District because our farm is actually on their land. This is their elementary school and also their administrative offices. And our farm is right here. Our farm is one acre in size and it is considered an educational garden because its size is not that large, but that doesn't mean we don't grow that much food. Just last year, we grew 20,000 pounds of food on this one acre. And we donated over 7,000 pounds of that food to those local charities that I mentioned. 7,000 pounds of food is enough to fill two school bus buses, big school buses, all the way from bottom to top. And the reason we're able to grow so much food in such a small space is Farmer Sean does a lot of work on making sure he's using his space to his advantage. As soon as one plant is pulled out of the ground, we plant something else in its space. And we use things like companion planting to help our plants as well. Hey everyone, it's Farmer Sean here. Um, I'm a head farmer here at the Urban Farm with Grow Green Morristown. My uh, role is the Director of Agriculture and Education. Uh, about 18 years ago, I got a degree in agribusiness, which gave me the skills to understand um, climate and weather, um, horticulture, plant science, uh, how to take care of a landscape, and also gave me very valuable business skills and um, uh, people skills that I used um, still today. Uh, when I first started here, the idea was just to teach some kids in the school district about where their food comes from and uh, donate produce to local charities and soup kitchens in the area. So I had no um, education experience when I started, so I just took what I learned in college and dumbed it down to for second graders to understand plant science and we walked around the farm and tasted vegetables and it um, really took off. So now 10 years later, we're over an acre in cultivation, uh, donating thousands of pounds of produce to local soup kitchens and charities. And um, we've quadrupled the uh, amount of production that we can get out of just one acre by incorporating companion planting, um, intercropping, doing multiple crop rotations throughout the season so that um, we're really getting the most out of our soil. And then um, every winter we're making sure that we're putting all the nutrients back into the ground so that the following season, um, the plants have what they need to get from the soil to be healthy and so that we don't have to use any pesticides or chemicals here on the farm. We're going to start our tour right here. So what we're actually looking at is our one of our tomato patches. And notice that it's not just tomatoes. We also have plants like this, which is bok choy, so that we're using a lot of our space. So these tomatoes, um, like I said, it's only July 1st. By the end of July, these tomatoes will get uh, almost as tall as these steaks. These steaks are about six feet tall and they will have those beautiful big slicing tomatoes on them. On the other side, as we continue our walk, 
we can see some lettuce. So every two weeks, Farmer Sean plants new rows of lettuce. And lettuce, we, we pick a certain variety that grows well in the summertime in the hot weather because some lettuce doesn't like it when it's hot and it will actually do something called bolting. And I'll show you an example of that. But this way he has a constant supply of lettuce. So in this high tunnel, you will actually see tomatoes are on the vine and ready to go. So the reason why these tomatoes are ready before the ones that are outside basically has to do with this covering. So this high tunnel is like a little plastic house. Um, the sides can go up and down. They are up for the summertime because in here, the temperature gets really, really warm, um, really fast, okay? So it's, it's a mini greenhouse, basically warmer temperatures, the plants are gonna grow faster. We also regulate exactly how much water these plants are getting with our drip line. And once again, Farmer Sean making use of all available space. So we train these tomatoes to climb up these ropes and literally by the end of the summer in September, these tomatoes will be almost as tall as the roof in here, which is about 10 feet. So they are slowly climbing up. Farmer Sean comes along and clips them in to the string as they grow. So they're going straight up. That means there's room on the ground. So Farmer Sean plants things like basil, which I mean, I can't have tomatoes without basil. It's absolutely delicious herb. And then the other things he plants are onions. These are like scallions, green onions, and they take up a small space and the tomatoes are still able to grow. So we got our tomatoes, scallions, and our basil. We're picking garlic today. Garlic was planted back in last November. We select the best cloves to pull. So the ground's a little dry today, but very carefully pop up the garlic. And now comes a beautiful clove. Woo! Yesterday we showed you all of that garlic that we pulled out of the ground. So we pulled out about 2,600 heads of garlic or bulbs of garlic. And now they are all hanging these are some of them, hanging in our barn. So when we got them out, we had to kind of separate them by size, small, medium, large. Um, the small ones and mediums are here and they are bunched and ready to be sold at our market. These um, heads of garlic will actually be good for several months. They will last until about May. Now the really big ones, we took and put them in another barn. After we harvest our garlic, we pick the largest bulbs that we actually are not going to sell. But we're going to save them. And you see Sean's up there. Why are we saving these, Sean? Uh, we save these for artificial selections for seed for next season. Ah, so we want the best ones that there are. So maybe you've heard about natural selection where nature decides who should survive and who shouldn't, right? Survival of the fittest. But we, this is called artificial selection because we as farmers are picking the best ones because then we know next year we will have the best garlic. How many years have we been planting garlic? Uh, this, this is my seventh year planting and saving garlic seeds. So we haven't had to buy any seeds for garlic in what, eight years? In eight years. Wow, that's awesome. And yeah. they're so delicious. This plant right here, is an eggplant. And if I kind of sneak below, you'll see one of these flowers. So these beautiful flowers, once they get pollinated by a bee, that flower will then turn into those eggplants, those beautiful purple eggplants. So we have several rows of eggplant, older ones, and then newer ones. Just like the lettuce, Farmer Sean will gradually plant them every two weeks to ensure a constant supply of eggplant over the summer. Here's some of our bigger lettuce plants that are growing and these actually will be harvested next week for sale at our farm stand for our CSA members, for people who come to our farm stand on Saturdays, and then any excess that we don't sell will get donated to those in need. 
next to the lettuce, this plant that's growing, look close here, you might kind of recognize what this is. When we eat this, we're eating a stem. I like to have it with some peanut butter on it, but this is actually our celery plants. Celery takes a, a long time to grow, so this celery probably won't be ready um, for about another month. So a lot of the plants we plant at the farm actually started as little baby plants that we grew in our greenhouse. And once they are big enough, we bring them over to the farm and we plant them. But then there's certain vegetables that we plant directly as a seed in the ground. And which plants we do that with are our root vegetables, right? So root vegetables are things that grow under the ground and when we eat them, we're eating their roots. These plants, this is actually radishes. Now, in about another week, we will come through and thin these out, meaning we want them to be this far apart, not right on top of each other or they won't grow. Another thing that we just planted, and you can see it's just starting to come up from the ground, if I can find it, right here. Those are actually beets. I can see it's kind of like reddish next to that green. Those will be delicious beets in about two months. This ferny stuff is actually asparagus and now maybe if you look down here at the stem you can kind of see it looks like asparagus asparagus is pretty cool because it is the only perennial we have here at the farm a perennial means it comes back year after year most plants that we plant here at the farm are annuals meaning we plant them once they grow we harvest them they don't grow back again unless they were to seed themselves but Asparagus takes about three years to grow into a good patch that we can harvest to eat. This asparagus is only a year old, even though it's really tall and it's really pretty. We let it do this, and we've got seeds on it, so that next year it will grow back even bigger, and by the third year we'll be able to harvest it to eat. It's a delicious vegetable in the early spring. This is perhaps one of my favorite things we grow at the farm and these massive plants that we're looking at and when I say massive I'll show you how big they are compared to my hand but in these plants we see these beautiful yellow flowers and underneath them you'll see something that looks like this these are zucchini okay so these are zucchini plants um, we just started picking the zucchini um, they are delicious and you get so many of them. There's another one right there, you can see. Um, this flower will fall off. It's really cool information about the flowers on a zucchini plant. And I'll kind of tell you about that right now. You know, there's a difference between the flowers on the zucchini. There's actually boy flowers and girl flowers. This flower is a boy that has this really thin stem and the boy flower actually will not turn into a zucchini. This is a girl flower. And if I look real close at the bottom, I might even notice the stem is thicker and it actually looks like a little tiny baby zucchini because that's exactly what it is. Um, and that flower will then turn into our larger zucchini. So this is a boy flower and inside we can see all of this yellow stuff and then if I get it on my fingers, you'll see all this. This is the pollen from this boy flower. And this pollen will go on a bee's legs or maybe a butterfly's legs. Once it comes over and that pollen then gets transferred onto the girl flower, well then we have a delicious zucchini in the making. Remember I told you, Farmer Sean is really good at making use of his space. Next to the zucchini plants, you see that white thing down there? That is a turnip. Those turnips are gonna come out this week um, so it was a great place to plant more than one thing because these were planted when the zucchini plants were really tiny. Now the zucchini plants are getting bigger, the turnips will come out, and we'll have even more space for zucchini. All right, here's another one of my favorites. And yes, this looks like a complete jungle. And these plants, they're actually kind of like sharp. So on these leaves, um, they're kind of rough. 
but underneath these leaves, I'm kind of, it's like a little treasure hunt. So we have to look around, but eventually we might find, oh, there's one, it's hiding. And you can see the flower on the end. Take a guess what that is. If you guess cucumber, you are correct. If you said pickles, well, you're kind of correct because cucumbers, they have to get put in a brine solution of salt and vinegar and spices. Then they turn into pickles. But yeah, these are, this is our one of our cucumber patches. So there's a little cucumber in there too. So just like the squashes, there's, um, because this is also a squash, cucumbers, there's boy flowers and girl flowers. Um, so kind of like we were looking before at the squash. Let's see if I can get my camera in the right spot. So that flower has a thin stem. So what do you think, boy or girl? It's a boy. And then the flowers that are kind of thicker stem, and those are the ones that need to get pollinated. Those are the girl flowers, and they will turn into those delicious zucchini. So same thing, there are boy flowers, girl flowers on the cucumbers. Um, and once the pollen goes from that boy flower, and usually the boy flowers are open first, and then if it gets inside this girl flower, and pollinates it, then we will get our delicious cucumber. So yeah, that's our awesome cucumber patch. So earlier in the video, I showed you those little baby radishes we had just planted. And here are some radishes all ready to eat. So radishes are the fastest growing vegetable we have here at the farm. They take approximately 28 days, one month, to go from that seed in the ground that I basically was kind of showing you before to a radish that we can pick from the ground and eat. They have a nice spicy flavor to them, but delicious. Also our beets, I just showed you some of those beets that were just coming up. And then these still aren't quite ready, but once this gets a little bit bigger, we will be able to pick some beets out of the ground. Moving on down. More radishes. So just like the lettuce, um, the radishes and the carrot, I'm um, sorry, and the beets, and the, we will plant like every two weeks. And then another cool thing is to notice is the carrots. And I'll tell you a little bit about the importance of carrots and radishes now. When we plant our radishes, we actually plant carrots at the exact same time. So here are carrots, this ferny stuff, and these are radishes. The reason we do this is to kind of help Farmer Sean. So the radishes will grow very quickly and in 28 days we'll be able to eat them. Carrots take about 55 days until they're ready to eat. So these radishes are helping because they are blocking the soil around the carrots. And since that soil is blocked, there's a less chance of having things like this, which are weeds, right? So by us planting them together, when we actually pull the radishes out of the ground, there won't be so many weeds for our carrots to continue growing. So one other companion planting that we do here in the farm is we have our beets, right? Our beautiful beets. And next to them, these are actually onions. And Farmer Sean plants them together because there are a lot of bugs that like beets. And our beets, um, you know, we want them to grow. We don't want them to get bugs. We don't use any uh, pesticides here. We don't use any chemicals on our plants. So we're using nature to help us. And what it is, is the onions, well, onions are really smelly. I mean, you probably have noticed onions have to give off a scent. Well, those onions, that scent is basically given off and it keeps the bugs from noticing the smell of the beets because all it can smell is the onions. So that's a great way of companion planting and another way of not using chemicals to keep those bugs away. So here we're in another high tunnel. And like I said, the high tunnels make it a really nice hot temperature for our plants. Once again, we see that delicious basil, the herb, and then growing next to it in this tunnel, another plant that really likes heat. If you see this, you might know. Yes, hot peppers. 
So this is a hot pepper. Um, that looks like jalapeno. So this is our hot pepper tunnel. And not too long, we'll have lots of good peppers to eat in here. So a lot of the vegetables that we grow are actually fruits. So things like tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, zucchini, because they all have seeds. This is one fruit that we do grow that everyone knows is a fruit. These are berries. Um, these are raspberries that are ready to be picked and absolutely delicious. Um, blueberries are the state fruit in New Jersey and now's the time to get those blueberries. Um, also the raspberries, right in season right now. Hi everyone. I have an omelet here and nice little chickens. We have a flock of 16 chickens here that we use to help compost all of our waste. So all of our vegetable scraps go to them. They get to eat and be really healthy and give us delicious eggs um, while at the same time creating good compost for our soil. We'll give her a treat. We'll give her a nice little... Let's see if she goes for her. Ooh. Oh, yeah. She likes the greens. <laughs> These are our chickens, and we have 16 chickens here at the farm. They're all girls. Say hi, girls. They are very chatty. So we have these chickens because, number one, they give us eggs. And we sell those eggs for our farm stand. We also sell them for our CSA members. They get eggs as well. But the other reason is they're kind of like our trash disposal system. So you can see there's some green stuff here. And if I walk around, we'll see another pile of green stuff. So basically, when we weed or when we harvest and we have food that we cannot eat, these were like the extra leaves on the cabbage plants um, over here with some weeds. So they basically get a chance to eat all of these things. And as they eat them and scratch through this, this pile of green stuff, within a week um, will just be a mound of dirt again. Um, we will use their compost. It sits for a year and after a year, that compost is used on our crops to help grow things, has lots of good nutrients in it. Um, so they're really doing double duty here, or actually triple duty. They're helping to eat and get rid of food waste. They're giving us delicious eggs. At Somebody's singing a little song because, tell us why you're singing that song. You're singing that song because we just laid an egg. So this is a bluish green egg laid by, can I get the pretty lady in? That pretty lady right there who's singing a song, she just laid that egg, so she's very proud. Even though they're girl chickens, these are not roosters. They still make quite a racket. But they do. After they lay an egg, they'll usually sing a song. So that chicken right there, her breed is an Easter egger because her eggs are that bluish green color. Next to her is a black chicken. That black chicken, its breed is an Australorp. An Australorp chicken will lay brown eggs. So we have a brown egg from the Australorp. We have our green egg from the Easter Egger. Good job, ladies. So we have 16 chickens, and we can see if we actually got 16 eggs. Because in an ideal world, yeah, every single chicken would lay an egg a day. And they are all girls. But here you get a chance to see the difference between the um, Easter Eggers and the Australorps. So let's count. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven eggs today. So we make sure surrounding the entire urban farm and in between the plants, we make sure that there's lots of flowers and we need those flowers because they are going to encourage the bees, the butterflies, and the other pollinators to come. And if they come and visit our flowers, well, they're probably going to come visit our vegetables and plants and fruits.